You're a child of mine. You're not a beggar. So stop treating the situation like you need to beg for scraps. When you're a child, I'm delighted to give you things. And if I'm not, if it's not happening, you have to trust my timing. I'm so glad you've joined us for the podcast today. On this episode of Dreamers and Disciples, I get a chance to talk with Jane Williams. Jane and I served for over 10 years together at Elevation Church, where she was a worship leader and a songwriter. I was the worship pastor at the time, and I can't wait for you to hear from Jane's heart, what she's learned as she's transitioned into a new season now, no longer on staff, but really pressing into her gifting and her passion as, as a songwriter, but also as a mom and as a wife. And just what God is teaching her right now, I think is gonna encourage you to trust the Lord with your dreams uh, in a new and a fresh way with greater expectation. But before we get into the conversation, I wanted to make sure you've taken my new Dreamer quiz. This quiz is free. You can do it in less than 90 seconds. And when you do, you're gonna find out your unique Dreamer type. There's five Dreamer types and you're gonna find out yours and also your strengths, your weaknesses, and some action steps where you can dream in the way that God has wired you to dream. So you can get all of that at wayjoy.com slash dreamer quiz, or just check the link in the show notes or in the episode description. So make sure you take the dreamer quiz. And now it's time to jump into our conversation with Jane Williams. Jane, welcome to the podcast today. Thank you, Wade. It is so, it's exciting to be here. I'm pumped. You and I have known each other for a very long time. I've done yes, ministry together for over 10 years at Elevation. Um, That's right. You're in an exciting new season of songwriting mm-hmm. and being a mom, being a wife, That's doing right. ministry, just holding everything together in the Williams household and writing amazing songs all over the place. That's right. I'm trying, any- right? <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, now I want to start with the question that I'm starting every interview with this season, take Mm -hmm. it however you want to. Okay. But what are you dreaming about right now? Oh man. Okay. In this, in this, uh, current phase right now, I am dreaming about vacation. (laughs) Does that, is (laughs) that that okay? Can I say that? Is that all right? Yes, you can. (laughs) Um, so Luke actually turned 40 this year. And so, uh, and also Ryan Hollingsworth is turning 40 in uh, July. And so we're doing a combo trip and like Colleen's going and it'll be the Swerths and us and the Ewers. And, um, but so we're going to, we're going to uh, go to Cancun <laughs> in the end of June and just for uh, a combo 40 celebration. <laughs> I mean, I just turned 47. So, so if I can go on the trip too, ca- that, please, that'd be amazing. I, listen, listen, let's book you, <laughs> you and Ferris, let's get you there. Um, but yeah, I, I am pumped for, this is the first vacation that we've done without kids. And Mm -hmm. so I'm uh, no offense. My kids are great. I love them dearly. They're great. (laughs) Um, at the same time, I really am like so excited about, uh, having some time and just going on vacation. Um, did Uh, you want like a deeper answer (laughs) than that? I mean, we can just talk about vacation. That sounds awesome. But if you have something else go for it. (laughs) Oh man. Okay. I would say, uh, so, so you were kind of touching on it a little bit before this, this phase, uh, for me has been one of transition and coming off staff for so long for about 11 or so years. And then, uh, straight into writing and being home. Like I've, I'm at a point in life where I feel like I've never been more so needed than at home with my kiddos and all the, just everything that they're doing and we're doing. And so um, I think I have been very, very aware recently of just bad habits. Uh, And it's just little things, you know, like just being more prepared in different ways or just being like more, it's weird when you're so focused on work and then you transplant that to be focused on home and you're just like, all of a sudden you're, you know, like up close examining, like, why do we, I, I need to do this and this needs to be done this way. And like, just to make things more like efficient. And so, um, I, so I would say I am dreaming about, <laughs> um, <laughs> those good habits becoming actual habits and seeing more of the fruit of that take place in our everyday life of just being more, 
I don't know, just more together, more prepared, more just kind of seeing some of the fruit that's going to come out of this, out of this season. Yes. So I'm, I'm, I'm dreaming, I'm dreaming about that. I dream all the time about my kids <clears throat> being more prepared yes. and <laughs> with mm. good habits every mm-hmm. morning. I dream about that. Oh my gosh. Um, yes. <laughs> now we, we could do a whole podcast just on habits. <laughs> yes, we could. <laughs> Um, Anyways, now we talked about, you mentioned transition Mm -hmm. and you haven't just walked through a transition in the last 18 months of coming off staff at Elevation, but you've, over the time that I've known you, you know, you're a gifted songwriter, gifted worship leader, a deep well when it comes to teaching and, and, and sharing wisdom from God's word. How have, you've got a lot of gifts how has your dream for how you want to see God use those gifts evolved over the years? Oh man, that first of all, thank you. Um, I've I've spent a long time uh, learning from you. In all honesty, <laughs> um, oh. I so that's such a good question. I think, um, I mean, there's been a lot of conversations obviously you and I've had over the decade this past decade in your yeah. office o- oftentimes that have been uh uh visited with tears from me <laughs> <laughs> here I just remember thinking all the time here I am crying in ways of this again <laughs> <laughs> anyways um uh I-, I would say one of the things I think that the Lord has really been teaching me in this season has been um being able to accept the rest of God. And, um, the, like, as in like a Sabbath rest and, and also, um, gosh, it's so deep. How, how do we just like enter in to all of it? Um, I'm a three on the Enneagram. <laughs> Enneagram is always a great place to start, right? <laughs> to yes. Give you context. Um, uh, I'm a three on the Enneagram, which obviously, you know, and I'm sorry, by the way. Um, but threes are just so insanely driven and we're just very, um, it's actually been pretty eye-opening studying the Enneagram just over the course of the years, uh, and seeing the profound impact that it's had on, on me and, and realizing that I am default set to just, um, push and manipulate, <laughs> um, just kind of elbow your way in and just like, just a workhorse of just trying to get stuff done and, you know, just like go, go, go mentality. And in some ways that's really awesome. And in some ways, that is really awful. And I think <laughs> right. that um, I didn't see right the the parts that that were damaging about it until I think it was not too late because nothing's wasted. We know we all know that God can redeem anything, and He has. Um, but I think living in a spot where I was consistently trying to force things to happen um, left me broken. And just in a place where I was like, man, just profoundly tired on levels I just did not know that I had. And and so, and I know it's just super vulnerable and just like out there, just being honest, like, and and I think it was, it was earlier last year uh, that the Lord really started focusing my heart around what Sabbath rest is and what it, it's not just one day, right? Like, it's not just one day. Mm -hmm. Of, of the week being able to rest. It's this concept that's so much bigger. It's this concept that um, long outlasted even the law that Jesus came to fulfill. And, um, and to me, it's like knowing that there's a God who created the universe in seven days, the sixth day he created, and I don't think this is any, uh, any, any accident at all. The sixth day he created man, the seventh day he rested. And it's interesting to me to note that those, that that is, um, those days follow each other. It wasn't like God was like, okay, first thing I'm going to do is create a man day one, because I need his help. I really need his help and his input (laughs) and his like, you know, thought and his brain and his work and all of his sweat and, you know, blood and tears and all this stuff to to create all this stuff. It was like, no, I, I really do think that the Lord by his grace, saved saved creating man to the sixth day so that the very first encounter with God, his very first day alive, was in, in utter communion and in this shalom peace, in this Sabbath rest with, with God. 
Hmm. And that's, that is something that's profoundly different and it feels left footed to me, but it's something that I really am drawing a lot of, of meaning from, um, in, in my life. And I'm not, I'm not perfect at it at all yet. Um, but I'm, I'm very, very compelled by, by that in, in just like open book, like, Lord, please show me where I'm still trying to run to try to just like force things to happen. And let me just live in this shalom peace of God and just like accept the rest of God. Um, there's a, there's actually a passage in Hebrews. Um, I'm going to read it. I'm going to read from the Bible. Preach to us, Jane. (laughs) Preach to us. I know. Get ready. Um, it's Hebrews 4, which like, uh, this just spoke to me so much. Hebrews 4.10 says, for anyone who enters God's rest also rests from their works, just as God did from his. Let us therefore make every enter effort to enter into that rest. Um, it's just interesting that that it's like a goal. Like the writers, the writer of Hebrews is, is like, it should be a goal of yours to enter into rest. And how just like we have that so mm-hmm. backwards. I've had that so backwards for so many years. And when you live in that cycle, there's so many things that start breaking. And you, I think our tendency is just to like, I almost think of it as like a, like if you're driving and your engine light like comes on or all these like your gas light or whatever comes on and all these like warnings being like, hey, this is a problem. But instead of like going and like taking your car in to get it fixed, you get to pull out your hammer and you're just like, nope, let me just break that light <laughs> to where it's like, okay, you might be able to go, you know, however many more miles down the road, eventually you are going to burn out. And because we were not mm. designed to, we weren't designed for that. And so um, I think learning how to rest has just been so profound for me and something that that I've been taking into this next season that I've I think I've learned the hard way from seasons past. <laughs> no, that's I'm really glad you you went there because I struggle with this a lot as well. Hmm. And I struggle with finding the line between okay, I know that I'm called to be a good steward of what God's given me and yes. to maximize <laughs> what he's placed in my hands, but I also know that God has called me to rest and to not strive. And sometimes I can get so confused being like, ah, do I need to like, if I stop and like rest, am I falling short of what I'm supposed to do or falling short of my potential? And so I'm in the season of trying to learn how to have a heart posture of rest and a soul posture Mm -hmm. of rest, even as my body is working. Yeah. Yeah. But I still get it confused all the time. Talk to me about how you manage that tension because- those conversations in our office that we talked about were about, you know, a lot of times like things you were passionate about doing. And in some seasons you were able to run in them, some seasons you weren't. Mm -hmm. And we had to wrestle with that. So tell me a little bit more about what you're learning about that dichotomy of rest and work. Oh man, I was actually going to ask you how (laughs) how you do that because I'm still (laughs) trying to learn. Um, I, I think, I think for me, one of the things that I, one of the triggers, I think for, not triggers, I think one of the indicators for me is that when, so I can work at something and the Lord, the Lord delights in us working at something and preparing stuff. Um, obviously I'm a three. I mean, like clearly, right? He loves threes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Threes are but, his favorite. Um, threes are his favorite. We can just all agree on that. <laughs> but I, I think when it comes, it's almost like, well, the work of my when 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 I take it too far when when I'm working at something and it's not just in my hands that I'm working on it but it just seeps into my my heart and my soul in a bad way in the sense of where I start like obsessing over it and if when I'm worried about it when I'm anxious about it those are the indicators to me that I'm like whoa 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 I've I've been down this road before and I've I've seen what it can turn me into and um, I think so in particularly when it comes to like writing songs, right? I'm kind of in a unique position right now being being a writer, I get to write. <laughs> and, <laughs> but what that means is I'm in the season, I'm not an artist. And so I get to come into rooms with artists, with producers and and come together and be like, what's the Lord been showing you? What do you want to write about? That's often how those conversations will start or those song sessions will start. And so we'll write out obviously after, um, trying to figure out what's in what's in the artist's heart, what the, what the artist wants to say wants to say, and that's a very unique position that I I I know that God did this on purpose because 
I I will I will, I'm a workhorse when it comes to like preparing or like in in the songwriting room. But the second I step out, I have to let it go. And I mm. I know that be God be in His grace and knowing my past and knowing what I'm I like struggle with. In His grace, He He let that happen to for me to just be like, hey, work at it with all your heart and then put it down. Then trust me that I will be the one to breathe life into whatever songs need to come alive for different seasons, for different artists. And um, and you, it's out of your control. And I think that that's like something that's very on purpose for, for the Lord to do for me and something that's been like difficult, but also I'm so thankful for because um, the second that I start obsessing over songs of just like, this is so great. Why doesn't he or she, you know, do, do they see that? Is this going to whatever? Like, Lord, please, please just breathe over this song. and do. <laughs> That's cool to pray about it. But also like, ah, like to just put it down in the sense of like, let literally let, there's nothing that escapes God's attention or power. And he is able to pull songs from obscure places in different times and put them and plant them where they need to be in different seasons. He delights in that. Hmm. And it's not this like, I, I feel like I just, I, for struggling so long in, in some, some ways of just wanting stuff to happen and like seeing sometimes it didn't really happen and that tension, I think what it creates, it would create, sometimes creates in us is this um, almost like, like image of God that he's, that you need to beg him for stuff and that he's yeah. something that, you know, is just kind of like, man, when it starts getting good, I'm going to, I'm going to pull the rug out from underneath you or the hammer's going to drop. And so it's almost kind of just like, keep working, keep working, keep working. If something good happens, it's almost just like brace yourself because it's going to be taken away. And I feel like the Lord really had to be yeah. like, almost just sit me down and look at me in the eyes and just be like, who do you think I am? You know, like, who do you, like, why are you treating mm -hmm. me like, like some like random guy that doesn't know you that you have to beg me to get my attention, you know, like, I, and I, and I, I really do. I, I think that that really hit home in one way. I was, when I was praying, um, I think it was earlier this year and I, I almost was just kind of like, it was one of those like kind of fed up prayers where I was like, Lord, and I just asked him, I was like, what do you see when you see me? And right away, mm -hmm. he, I feel like he spoke to my heart and he said, I see a child in need. And I was like, a part of me was just kind of like, wow. well, duh. I'm like, thank you. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> like, part, and I was like, God, I trust our relationship enough to know that like, we're still good with, for, with me wrestling through all this stuff. And I was like, well, yeah, like, I'm just kind of frustrated at that answer. And then right away again, he said, notice that I said a child and not a beggar. You're a child of mm. mine. You're not a beggar. So stop treating this situation like you need to mm. beg for scraps. When you're a child, I'm delighted to give you things. And, and if I'm not, if it's not happening, you have to trust my timing. It has more to do with timing and your preparation than it does anything else that you make it into. Mm. And I think that that was a, that's a huge part that I'm, I really am starting to just like, if the second that I, feel like I have to beg God for stuff is an indication to me, okay, I, I've i taken this too far and I'm trying to manipulate things and force them to happen instead of just letting God be my father and me letting me just be a, a child that's dearly loved. <laughs> um, yeah. So I, th I think that's a roundabout answer. <laughs> Man, that, that was so beautifully said. There's so many threads that I want to chase through that mm -hmm. answer. But really, it does come down to because you had mentioned earlier manipulating outcomes when you get like in that place mm -hmm. of of not resting. And as you were talking, I I, I realized I tend to try to manipulate a no and turn it into a yes from God when mm. I don't trust His heart wow. towards me and when I don't yes. trust His goodness. And yeah, yeah, it really does start with understanding the Father's heart and that we mm -hmm. start each day. As followers of Jesus, we start from approval. We start from God yes. being generous towards us, not withholding something from us. And I mm -hmm. think the more I can like keep my perspective coming back to that, the more at yeah. rest my soul is, even in hectic and busy seasons. Because yes. I think, like you said, oh. yes, there's a physical component to rest, 
but it really yeah. is a heart and a soul and a spiritual rest that Jesus wants to give us. Yes. You and I Absolutely. were talking the other day about anxiety because I think mm -hmm. it's it's a good, I guess it's a good thing to bring into this conversation because I feel like one of the ways that our soul can get out of alignment and our body can get out of alignment and out of rest is through anxious patterns or anxious, yeah. I guess if we have an anxious spirit or certain triggers that lead us into anxiety, talk about your experience with that because both of us have struggled mm -hmm. with anxiety at different levels. I've mm -hmm. had panic attacks before. I've had yeah. see, like very intense seasons of struggling with anxiety. And, and the Lord has helped me on multiple levels yeah. to come out yeah. of the severity of that. But it's still something that I can struggle with in different seasons of my life. What yeah. are you finding to help lead you out of anxiety and into trust yeah. and into peace and into rest? Yeah. So, man... That's such a good question. <clears throat> I so I'm <laughs> I'm prompted to tell you the truth, <laughs> which is weird for me because normally <laughs> I'm just just kidding. No, but I I really am pro as much as I don't want to say this. I do feel like there is such a um, <laughs> medical answer to this that I think mm -hmm. I mean there's there's multiple levels obviously to anxiety, but one a, a huge one for me was figuring out and learning that I was very, very deficient in vitamin D to where my doctor was like, hey, if you don't fix this, like you literally mentally, you, you are, there's going to be so many issues that happen with you. I mean, there's depression, anxiety, just a whole slew of things. So like I was very, very low with vitamin D. Um, also, and this is super bizarre, but I just, I'm, I just want to say it. Like I, um, I was allergic. I'm allergic to folic acid. Um, I, my, your bot, like, and there's actually a, a lot of people uh, in the population uh, have, it's like a gene mutation. <laughs> it sounds mm. so bizarre, but I, you just hear me out. Cause this is like, this really set me free. Um, folic acid is in everything. And I, my body can't like methylize it. I can't use it. I have to, I like, I need actual folate. And, um, and so when you have, when you have tons of folic acid that's in vitamins and pasta and bread, I mean, like we put folic acid into everything, it builds up in your body and it literally can mentally make you crazy and have a bunch of other like different slew of like issues that happen. And so, um, so learning that, like, you know, like actually need to take folate, folate instead of folic acid. Um, it lit those two things alone, Wade, like, I, I mean, yes, exercise, getting sun, like getting and mm -hmm. not being afraid to like actually let your body like receive the sun from the from the sky like um being able to like exercise um regularly but those the the folate and vitamin D thing for me truly truly uh, made it was literally like someone reached down into my brain and turned the lights on again it was mm -hmm. wild and i know that you you had i mean you had a front row seat when i was like really really low really low um, to where it was like, man, I, I'm not sure if like I can do this job. Like I, I want to do this job. I feel led still and called, you know, and equipped to do this job. But I'm like, I'm losing it. And it was really, though, that was really tough. And what well, one thing that was just really rough too in that season was seeing, seeing my kids watch me in that season. And mm -hmm and sending me notes and leaving me notes on my, on my mirror. So I'd, I'd wake up and see it in the morning. Like, I love you, mommy. Today's going to be a good day. And just anything to try to like, just make me smile. And, um, I don't know why that memory just randomly came back, but it is, it really is worth as what I'm saying, especially as a parent, it is so worth it to track down those things. Even if you're just like, Hey, Anxiety is is spiritual and you should do, yes, there's elements to that, that yes, we can absolutely, let's work on it. Also too, you might not actually physically have the makeup mentally that that you need to to actually chemically not, to, to chemically like be at peace <laughs> and like clear headed. Yeah. There literally could be some physical stuff too. And to to really listen to your gut on that stuff and go to different doctors and and put it before the Lord and like, um, I think that's, it's just really, really worth it. So that's one end for sure. That was, that was huge for me. Again, it literally was like someone just turned the lights on and, uh, and, and I just, yeah. I, I literally, I felt like I saw things differently. I was like, man, this is, 
I can handle this. Like it felt like you were just like all the, like all of a sudden you're able to breathe deep again. And whereas you just have been holding your breath Mm -hmm. and just, you know, and so that was a huge part. Um, sorry, did you want to say something before I go? Well, yeah, I was just going to say, I'm really glad that you talk about the physical component of anxiety because sometimes we relegate it to only a spiritual battle. And I feel like if you're, if you're, body is not healed and whole yeah. and moving in, in rhythms of health, then you're fighting anxiety with one hand tied behind your back. Because right. like, yeah. so for me, when I was in a moment where I was struggling a lot, I felt like the Lord really just spoke to me and said, hey, you're, you're not creating the space for me to do the healing I wanna do in your wow. life because of yeah. your diet, because you're not exercising, mm. because you're not getting enough sleep. And mm-hmm. these were all yeah. physical changes that I could make that were under my control. Yeah, There's a lot that's out of your control in life, but these were things that I could control. And I realized that I was not honoring God mm-hmm. through healthy physical rhythms in my life. And yeah. as I made yeah. small changes, I found that my mood got better. I mm-hmm. found that I felt more at peace. And I was able to think clear to then do the spiritual and heart work that I still needed to do. And this is obviously not to say that, I mean, there are some very serious anxiety conditions and diagnosis that require medical intervention. They require medication, therapy, counseling, all of that. So we're not just saying get vitamin D and get out in the sun and you're going to (laughs) be fine. But we are saying, I think both of us are in agreement that sometimes there are small things within your control that can actually have dramatic impacts on your mood and your well-being. Right, right. And to me, that is spiritual because I think everything, we can't compartmentalize the physical, the mental, the spiritual. I think God created us as a whole person and all of those affect each other. Yeah, yeah. I couldn't agree more. And I, I do like, so I, I had two different seasons of taking, of taking medication. And that was one thing that I, I think the Lord, and I remember just being so tied up in knots about that. Uh, and I, I think that the Lord brought me to a point where he's just like, listen, I I have so many different ways I can heal you. And so let this hmm. be what it is in this season. And and then we'll all, when time comes, I'll give you the next step so that you can do something different. And yeah. um and it so being open to how God wants to heal you is huge. And because it, it's it never it rarely comes how we want it to. And so I think the more open handed and open hearted that we can we can be and diligent in just putting it for before the Lord, like Lord, in, in this season is this okay? In this season is this okay? Would yeah. you show me? How, you know, like, would you show me what I need? It, like, just chemically in my brain, <laughs> like things that <laughs> right. I need or things I need to stop or whatever. And so, and and I think this the, the Father loves us so much that He'll tell us. And He'll tell us, like, when mm-hmm. we need to know. And and I think that, that it, it is. It's just like a crazy journey, but he will, He'll always let you know. Um, and I think I think another important lesson, you, you too, in all something. of it is— Oh, sorry. <laughs> um, no, you just no, said one thing it. real quick that I want to make sure we don't we don't gloss over is yeah. you said that God often will heal us in the way that we don't want Him to, or something mm-hmm. to that effect, which I thought was really profound. Because number one, that takes humility. It takes saying, yeah. "God, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna, you know, only obey you if this goes according to my plan, but I'm gonna humble myself yeah. before you and allow yeah. your healing to enter my life." Whether it's like Naaman, when Naaman didn't want to go and dip in the water seven times because he thought that was beneath him, but that's right. exactly how God was going to heal him. And it wasn't a matter of Ugh. the water being special. It was a matter of Naaman's heart posture. Right. And so, wow. yeah, I just, yeah. I, I wanted to make yeah. sure to key in on that because when you said it, I was like, oh, that's, there's so much in that because I've been yeah. on medication as well. Yeah. And that was kind of a humbling thing at first, but it has ended up being a very helpful thing for me in yeah. terms of overall health. Yeah. But continue. Yeah, this, no, I, I love, I, I, I love that we're able to talk about it. I mean, truly, because there's <laughs> yeah. just so, I, I feel like in certain circles, it's just kind of like, wait, what? Like what? And it, it's like, man, mm-hmm. let's just tell the truth about this. And 
life is too short and the, the stakes are too high for us to just be silent about it and not help each other. And so I, I love that we're able to like, to just talk about it and, and to, and to be able to, yeah, just learn from each other and, and everything. But, um, what, so that, oh yeah. Okay. So that's the, the physical, right? Like the, there's mm-hmm. da- absolutely a physical component to, to trying to like battle anxiety. And, um, I think though for, the spiritual side, um, I mean, there's so there's so much that your heart can like hover over. Um, but one thing that's been for for me particularly has been um, there's this <laughs> there's a random and I think we've talked about this before. Um, there's a random passage in Ezekiel 44 um, when the priesthood is being restored. Go with me here because I know that this is kind of right. like a whoop left turn um, <laughs> where God God is giving instructions. Um, to how he's like wanting to restore like worship and um, specifically to to the descendants of Zadok. And I think I'm pronouncing that right. You can correct me if I'm not. Um, Sounds right to me. (laughs) Which were, thank you. Their their job was to guard the altar. Whereas the the other like Levitical like priests were, their job was to guard the temple. And because the sons of Zadok never turned away from the Lord, whereas the other Levites priests did during their during the the crazy di- time of disobedience that the Israelites had, and so um, it was it's just so interesting to me how um, the Lord just re- reserved them to be like this. They are m- my people that are able to come into the inner sanctuary to approach me and to guard their position is to guard the altar. Um, and so they're, he's, the Lord's like giving the instructions to, to specifically to the sons of Zadok. And there's a, there's a verse in, in chapter 44 that said, do not wear anything that makes you perspire in the Holy of Holies, in the inner, in the inner uh, sanctuary. Um, and it's just like a, literally like reading over it. It's just kind of like you just pass over it and you're just like, Again, why am I in Ezekiel? There's so much stuff over my head. Like, let's go to like, I don't know, James <laughs> yeah. or something. But like it, that, it it captured, it captured my heart because it, the, at the very minute that I was reading it, the, the spirit of the, the spirit of the Lord was like, because I don't want human sweat in my presence, and that is why. Um, and the difference between what is spiritual and what is your like the product of your works is sweat. And that's how you can indicate like my, my sweat is, is a product of my labor and it's not necessarily the product of what the Lord is doing. And I think that I get that wrong so much, especially, especially in the context of, of working for a church and working in ministry and doing all this stuff for God. I bring my sweat into his presence all the time. And I'm not saying that there are not places outside of the temple where preparation is done and that's where things are, you know, happening. But when you're approaching God and you're coming to meet with Him face to face, your your sweat does not belong. It has no place in worship. And that to me is is everything because I think I it's weird, right? Being being the person on the stage that people are are watching, being like, okay, you lead us. You know, like hmm. what revelations has this God given you? You know, holy, holy person, <laughs> you know, and you're all of a sudden you're just like, crap, man, like I don't do I even know the Lord anymore? Like, I don't <laughs> where did I even have a conversation with him this week? I've been working so hard at my job <laughs> yeah. and doing all this stuff and and trying to love other people. And I'm you know, like, and it's and all this, like, I think this mounting anxiety happened in my heart because I was like, man. Me being in front of people, trying to steward people and usher them into the spirit and un- into the into worship, um, I was mistaking it to be like that's dependent upon my sweat and how much I can work, and mm-hmm. that completely is a hundred percent what the Lord's saying is He does not want to have happen. Yeah, uh, and I hope I I know that I'm kind of convoluting it a little bit, um, but that that in and of itself has just been such a foundational and pivotal thing for me to just be like, hey, pressure's off of you. It actually, you know, like the the anxiety mm-hmm. that I would feel and the anxiety I put on myself 
Because that's what that's a lot of it's self-induced, yeah. right? Like, especially when I watch Instagram and I'll see all these incredible people and I'm just be like, why do I don't belong here? Like what like I don't I don't have any, you know, business right. doing what I'm doing. That's not true, but that's like what I see. And if I'm not careful, like I will start working so hard and sweating so hard up on stage and let's worship the Lord and see how much I sweat. And <laughs> it's just like, it's just silly. <laughs> and that's what the Lord's like. I, I mm. actually do not want your sweat in my presence. Um, it's actually offensive to me. Mm. Like, don't even wear anything that makes you sweat. And I know that we're talking about like, like different levels here, but um so yeah, there's there's that concept. I know that as I feel like it was a little convoluted in explaining it, but I think I think maybe, no, I think you I, got I, it. <laughs> I feel like it's a very it's a very um insightful application in terms of we don't enter into God's presence through our works, through our yeah. effort, through our sweat. Mm. It's through the blood of Jesus, it's through his grace. And so whether you're on stage leading worship or you're in your prayer closet praying, you're just, you're in church worshiping, you are not having to bring your good works to get into God's presence. Yeah. So we are living from rest, from his approval, from his love. And then from mm -hmm. that, it says he created us and prepared us for good works, but that's a result of being in God's presence. It's not a way to get into God's presence and it's not, Right. in an attempt to try right. to prove that, oh, look at me, I'm I'm just right. a, as good of a worship leader as that person, or you know, right. for right. people who aren't worship leaders, right. insert your context. But right. I get, right. I relate to that so much because I can make even my relationship with God so much about my own efforts when it's not yeah. built on that to begin with. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, <clears throat> I think that's that's everything. I I, I really... I think there's another there's another little concept that my heart's really been uh, focused on as well, and and this I think this ties in really well as well. <laughs> there's so many wells. <laughs> um, that so I had I had a really bizarre dream earlier this year, and um, it woke me up, and I was like, "What in the world was that? Like this is so bizarre." I'm still trying to figure <laughs> figure that one out, but I, I like I couldn't go back to sleep for the longest time, and I started like praying about different things and. Um, the spirit really put on my heart, um, that there is such a difference between in and on Christ. And, uh, and I, I the way he's, the way he like laid it on my heart is he was like, you know how you've been asking me for a very long time, what, what the difference is between a, ch a, a church that is like fulfilling the kingdom mandates and 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 then a church that's not and how sometimes convoluted it can be and how much of a slippery slope and how depending upon the season it's like is it is it doing good things is it not doing good things and there's so many levels and you just get so lost and you're like man and um so the lord was like you know how you've been asking me about all that get to learn the difference between what in christ and on christ um, and so the more I was thinking about it, the more I was like, man, it really is such a beautiful mental picture of like, if I'm standing on something, I'm using it as a platform and I'm using it as something to stand on so that I can be seen. And it, it might be stable, but I'm the one that's being seen. If I'm in mm -hmm. something, my identity is lost. You can't, that's not like you don't even, you don't really even know I'm there. And that lit my heart on fire because it begged the question, am I willing to be hidden in Christ and not just stand on Him? Am I willing to lose my name, to lose my platform, to lose my identity, to be hidden in Christ? And um, mm -hmm. and to not use Jesus as a platform to stand on so that I can be seen. Because that and that is so dangerous. And I think that if I'm yeah. completely honest, I think that I've gone through seasons where I've been on and then I've been in and then on. And then it's just like this weird, you know, and that's what I think <laughs> is, is like the church as well. We're struggling with this in versus on thing. And I think that, um, I don't, I, I just think that's such a, it's such a beautiful like picture. And I, I think that the, the more time that goes on, like I was thinking the other day, even too, like, Okay, then then going through even some passages and and like the Eph Ephesians uh, two comes to mind about saying about the oh gosh I should just look it up so I don't butcher it. 
<laughs> but when the the whole um being built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets in Christ Jesus. Mm -hmm. And I'm just like, Lord, there's an on. And he's like, well, read the rest of the chapter. And literally there's like, uh, there's like 11 ins <laughs> in that same yeah. thing. And this is where it's like the very, ver the very next verse is in him. The whole building is being joined together to and rises to become a holy temple in the Lord. And in him, you two are being built together to become a dwelling in which God lives by a spirit. I mean, there's verse 13, but now in Christ Jesus, you who once were far away have been brought near by the blood of Christ. Um, his purpose was to create in himself one new humanity out of the two. And there's so many yeah. more ins than ons. And it just is this, this, um, it's just super impactful concept that I'm, I'm still like wanting to, to kind of dive into and figure out what this actually means. <laughs> yeah. No, I, I, I love that visual. The verse that came to mind is our lives are now hidden uh, with Christ in God. Yes. I knew and, I needed to talk to you about this because I was like, Wade's going to have some zingers <laughs> that he's going to put in here. <laughs> um, but I, I love that. Am I willing to be hidden and lose myself so that Christ is what people see? And my security is in Christ. My identity is in Christ. Yes, we stand on Christ as our foundation. Like you said, there's scriptures for that. But I think the emphasis is more of being hidden in Christ, mm -hmm. that that's where our peace and our joy and our contentment come from. That's yeah. just a really, the way you you kind of painted that picture, I'm gonna be thinking about that a lot today because you're right. I can yeah. sometimes want to do ministry mm -hmm. and stand on Christ so that people notice the right. stand that I'm taking or the efforts that I'm bringing about trying to make God's name famous, which is one of those phrases right. that I feel like people used to always say, I'm going to make Jesus famous, which I don't think Jesus <laughs> oh, needs geez. any help being famous. <laughs> that's, right. uh, that's usually me yeah. just wanting to be famous. Yeah. <laughs> but, right. but yeah, I think, I think there's something for all of us to really go back to. Like when John the Baptist says, he must become greater, I must become yeah. less. Yeah. I think that's the heart that you're talking about. Can I become less so that I'm hidden in Christ so that yeah. when people encounter me, they experience more of Jesus. Yes, there's yeah. the fullness of who he's created us to be. I don't think we, right. we lose the unique giftings that he's given us, but in all of it, it's all yeah. pointing back to Jesus. I love that. Right, yeah. I, I, think, I, I, think a, I, I told sorry, everyone that you're a deep well. <laughs> I said I was right well, when again, I told everyone you're a deep well. I was learned, I've learned from the best. <laughs> um, I think, I think one picture, I know that we're probably wrapping up with time, but one, one picture and I, I like, I, again, if you have any more thoughts about this or anybody, you know, like, please unpack this. Cause it, I know this, this really is like super impactful for me. And the more that we can, like, we can like digest some of this stuff mm -hmm. um, and push each other forward, the, the better I think we'll, we'll be for it. But um, one thing just like imagery wise, just the other day that Lord was like giving me with this concept is a tree. And again, I was like, Lord, but a tree's like on the ground. And he was like, is it on the ground or is it in the ground? And I'm like, mm -hmm. A tree is in the ground. A tree is more in the ground than it is on the ground. And this is where it's like semantics are just kind of silly. But for this context, I think that's like, that's a huge, I think it's a huge imagery, um, especially like Psalm 1 and all these trees, like obviously the Garden of Eden, like um, we are trees, right? Like, and a tree is nothing more than the root system, right? Like there's, there's so much more uh, about the tree that you can't see yeah. that's uh, that's underground. The roots have to be bigger than the actual branches. Um, I think that's true. Hopefully, the, yeah. any biologists out there. <laughs> <laughs> but um, a tree is more in the ground than on it. Yeah. And I think that that's true for us as well. Not like God can't bless like what you're doing, you know, like the ministry that you have and like what you're doing. But man, it's like it literally your life is drawn from being in and not mm. on. Um, well, as, and I, I as just you're think saying that that's that, everything. As you're saying that and talking about the tree, I think we are visible. What we do is mm -hmm. visible, but our hearts must remain hidden. So if we can keep our hearts hidden and mm -hmm. what where we find satisfaction and fulfillment, if all of that can remain hidden in Christ, then we can be as visible as we need to be to carry out the work that God's called us to do. But yeah. none of that is able to get at the secret place of our heart because the roots yeah. are deep there. Yes, um, man, preach that. That's awesome. That's awesome, Jane.
This has been We're good. I, I've loved this conversation. Thank you for just Same. being vulnerable, for sharing. Yeah just what's fresh, like what God is speaking to you right now. And even as you're processing yeah. it and kind of holding it loosely, I would love for you yeah. to just close this conversation, praying for people who yeah. need to experience that rest that only comes mm -hmm. from Christ. Um, mm -hmm. And whether it's, whether you want to pray for someone struggling with anxiety or, or, or anything yeah. else, like I just, I feel like you should just pray a blessing over everyone listening. Yeah, absolutely. Lord Jesus, um, we just come before you today and we just give you all the praise and the glory for being our Father and being so good and holding it all together, Father, even though we can't see, um, even though we have so many questions sometimes, even though we're, we can't see beyond our, our depression or anxiety or problems, Lord God. Um, Father, in the name of Jesus, I ask um, everyone under the sound of my voice for a lifting of depression, for a lifting of the dark clouds, for a lifting from the anxiety, just a piercing through, Father, that would start from the heavens down to the heart, Lord God, that the clouds would just roll back in Jesus' name, Father, that you would give intuition, that you would give revelation, that you would um, just give insight and wisdom to what people need, what their specific situation needs, Lord. Help them hear from the healer, God, just crystal clearly words. And Father, I pray that there be no um, no anxiety that, that they're going to miss your voice. If, you, if we miss your voice, you're able and willing to say it again. And you'll say it a thousand ways until we understand, Lord. And so, Father, I just, I pray, Father, that you, your spirit in this season would just tap into uh, deeper healing for all of us, Lord God. And I, I cast off, in the, by the authority of Jesus' name, I cast off any spirit of depression or anxiety. It has no place in our life, Lord God. And so it's done in Jesus' name. And we plead the blood of Jesus over us. We, pre, we plead the freedom. We plead joy, Jesus. I ask for joy in the name of Jesus, a holy um, peace and a contentment, Lord, um, just being with you and knowing who you are. Um, thank you for releasing it now, Lord God. And I, I just I thank you for Wade. I thank you for everything that's in his heart, everything that's in his mind and in his hands. Father, I bless him in Jesus' name that that he would just be able to to reach further than than anything that he could even dream up, Lord. I pray Ephesians 3:20 over him in Jesus' name. Thank you for his light, his faithfulness to you. He's been such an incredible example to me of perseverance and attitude and just being in love with you and pursuing you more than anything, Lord God. So bless him and Ferris and the girls. Um, and thank you for this time together, Lord God. I pray that you would just send it forth to wherever it needs to go. And um, we just love you and, and honor you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you, Jane. It's been, yes. it's been a joy having you on the podcast. I loved it, Wade. You're the best. Thanks for joining us today for the podcast. I pray that this episode encouraged you. I'd love if you would subscribe to the show and like the episode if it meant a lot to you, if God spoke something to you through it, and then share it with someone else. That would really mean a lot to me as we get the word out about the podcast, but also as we get this message out to somebody who needs to hear it. Now, if you haven't taken the Dreamer Quiz, make sure you do that at wayjoy.com slash dreamerquiz. And I'll see you back here next week for Dreamers and Disciples. Mm -hmm.